This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to do an unboxing of the Big Chief Front Load Electric Smoker. Now, typically, I have not been using the big one on this model. I normally use this one, which is the top load model. And uh, there's some reasons I like this one a little bit uh, better than the other one, but I think that recently this one has become a top model and so we can't really ignore it. So I want to make sure that I cover it well and uh, let's just get right into it. Let's open her up. So I've got it all out of the box, and first thing you'll notice is the door is in here in reverse. I believe that it's like that, so that way it gives it a little gap and a little safety there for packaging. Uh, but everything looks great. This one has come without a hiccup at all. There's no uh, scratches or dents or anything. And then um, all the parts are in a separate box. If you look in here, you can see the uh, element here, and then all these are the uh, shelf holders right there. Um, they're not adjustable like some models, but uh, Big Chief shelf holders are not adjustable on any of theirs. You can just remove and insert the trays that you actually want. Let's go ahead and open this box and get it assembled. So inside the box, first thing that I found on the top is the drip pan, and we'll go ahead and just slide that into the bottom there. Then we've got a bag of wood chips. I'm going to set this one aside because I won't be opening this today. We have a handle and bolts in this bag. A brand new wood chip pan, cord, basic instructions, and then the five grill grates. Set this stuff aside. I'm going to go ahead and put these in there. I'm going to hold this one out for a minute. In the bag with the handle, there is some basic instructions on how to put it together. But uh, really, you've got four nuts, four bolts, and two handles. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. And I didn't bring my tools out, so I'm just going to use my multi-tool. So we'll be right back. Now you can see here that I went ahead and added the top handle. And now I'm going to add the one on the door. It's really as simple as putting a bolt in here and then lining it up. Then screwing the nut on the other side. I like to get both bolts in before I tighten anything down. Once you have both bolts in, just take a screwdriver, tighten it up, and you can use a little wrench on the other side. But with this material, it's almost not necessary because the aluminum kind of uh, bends in just a little bit and it really self-seats. Now we've got the handle on the top and then I have the handle on the door. So we can just pop that in there real quick just to make sure. Just like that. Thing is almost completely set up. The next thing to do, the next thing to do is to add the 
power cord. This is a special power cord. It is uh, heat resistant, so not heat proof, but heat resistant. And um, they will last you a long time as long as you make sure that you don't let the whole smoker overheat like on a really hot day or um, in a confined area where this might get warm. I have had this one here last for five years without replacement. Previously, I had another one that I had to replace twice, but I think that was because I was overheating it. Simply plugs into the back. We are going to uh, season this smoker, and I'm still gonna follow my typical seasoning method. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this can, and I'm gonna spray this down. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that I do not get any on the element. To protect the element, I'm just gonna turn this pan sideways like that and that'll solve the problem. I don't want any of this to burn off on the element because I don't wanna take any chance it'll damage it. But just like all other smokers that I do, I'm gonna coat the top twice and then the sides lightly. Now finally, I'm gonna coat the drip pan. And the reason that I coat these is so that way it will make for easy cleanup. Other than that, there's no real purpose of doing that. Now, if you put in like a olive oil or something that's low temperature, you could burn it, but probably not in this smoker. So you can pretty much use whatever you want. I just use generic spray vegetable oil and we'll go a little bit more on the top there, and then the inside of the door. Now the reason I double coat the top is because that's the only area that I'll be washing on a regular basis, the top and the drip pan. And in the drip pan, we'll probably just throw a piece of uh, aluminum foil in there and just discard it as needed. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on there and then we're gonna plug it in. Now let's talk about this for a second. If you're going to plug in a smoker, you need a heavy duty electric cord. Now this smoker does not take a lot of power, but a, just a little cheap, you know, 16 gauge yard cord is probably not gonna do it. It might work for a string of Christmas lights, but it's not gonna be a good idea for a smoker. So we want a heavy duty cord. Uh, this one is an outdoor 12 gauge, which is decent. I mean, you could, a 10 gauge would be better, but it's probably gonna exceed the ability of the uh, outdoor GFCI anyway. Now, I'll go ahead and plug that in, set it to the side for now, so it'll start warming up. So why it's warming up, we're gonna talk about some of the basic stats for this thing. So there is five shelves in there and the smoker is rated for 50 pounds of meat or fish. Now, I looked all over the place and there's no actual square inches rating anywhere, but there would be in my other uh, review article for the Big Chief top load. But what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna go ahead and measure this and calculate it out really quick. So we've got 16 and a half by 10 and a quarter. So we'll just go 16 by 10 by five. That is 800 square inches of cooking space. Now you have to remember that that doesn't allow for height. So if you're gonna look at these trays, you're gonna see that they're relatively close together. Let's get a measurement on that. These trays are roughly three inches apart and that does not allow for a large piece of meat. Also, the temperature on this smoker is definitely a consideration that you probably won't wanna do any large pieces of meat. I recommend that if you're doing like a meat or something like that, that this is only for a pre-smoke for the first 
maybe hour of something like beef and less than that for something like chicken or um, pork. So then you could pre-smoke for a half an hour and then transfer over to your oven to complete it. You'll get a smoky flavor to it and then you'll be able to cook it completely. Now, 800 square inches is plenty of space and that will rival any of your large grills or smokers. But again, this is not for that kind of stuff. The temperature of this smoker is rated to go up to 165 and that's a pretty good number. Um, if you're looking at something like wintertime, you will need an electric insulation blanket to uh, guarantee that kind of temperature. And during summer, you'll easily get above that at about 170. So let's move on to the next thing now. It includes preset vents. So you won't need to adjust the vents or anything like that. They just, they just work automatically. Also, this smoker is UL listed and it says CUL. The heating element is 120 volts rated for 450 watts. And then of course, it says that it runs at approximately 165 degrees. Now, the wood pan is for wood chips or small wood chunks. If you put large wood chunks in, they will not burn. And if you put small, like uh, sawdust, it'll burn very fast. So if you want a really intense smoke that's gonna last really short, you can use something like Cameron's without any problem. It does come with a two-year warranty, and that's for manufacturer defect, but, um, I have never had any problem with manufacturer defect on these. My only concern was one time I had shipping damage. And honestly, um, the next point is, is that this is an embossed aluminum. And so it doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust or anything like that. With the shipping damage, I was literally able to pop it out with the back of my hand. I just pushed through it until it got flat again. And you can barely even see that the uh, dent is there. So I think that pretty much covers most of the basics. Now, of course, we do have some measurements here um, and it's uh, 24 and a half high by 18 inches wide and 12 inches deep. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the uh, weight of the smoker up here. Um, if I can remember, it's something like 18 pounds, but um, I'll double check that and you'll be able to see it right there. So. Next thing we're gonna to do to complete the seasoning is we're gonna go ahead and load this with some wood chips. The reason I set those other ones aside is because I happen to have full bag, or I happen to have open bags in this bag down here. I do tend to like to use something pretty strong when I do my first seasoning. So we have cherry here, and we have uh, hickory here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this hickory. Down near the bottom of the bag, there is a lot of uh, like sawdust in there. So that will burn a little bit quicker. And then it does actually mix well with the wood chunks. So I'll go ahead and put some hickory wood chunks in there also. Let's go ahead and get this away from the smoker since it's starting to warm up. And I'm going to show you this really quick. Around the edges it has a hard time burning so I always make a little mountain out of it. And when you do put chunks in, you want to kind of focus them towards the center. And then we'll just go ahead and put this in there. Now you can load it up all the way to where it'll barely squeeze through the door. And that's just fine. It will just burn over time through the sides. So I'm not going to open it back up to put this grate in. I'm just going to set it to the side for now. Now we've got that heating up and the wood chips are in there and it's gonna take about maybe five to 10 minutes for the wood chips to start smoking. And then after that, they'll burn for just a little more than 30 minutes for that size pan. If you get it really full, you might get 
40, 45 minutes out of it, but that's your top end for most electric smokers. Now this is something that everybody should have. This is a amazing pellet tray. Um, and then I have some mesquite pellets in here from the same company, but you can use whatever company you like. I also like the Pecan Delight. Um, very versatile pellet, works for just about everything and has a little touch of sweetness to it. When I do this, if I don't have a regular blowtorch, what I like to do is I like to take a piece of a haystack lighter and line it in there and then put the pellets on top of it so that way they'll get burning really well. Now it takes about 15 minutes for this to get going so that way we can use it to complete our seasoning. I wanna season this thing for hours. This much pellets in here is gonna give it enough seasoning to run, I wanna say maybe five hours but also, I have an electric smoke generator from Big Chief that I could also hook up in there and run it. We do want a little bit of warmth in there to kind of create that stickiness with the uh, oil. And then this will coat the inside with the smoke, resulting in a nice seasoned smoker in very short amount of time. So let me get a lighter and then we'll get this lit. So before I light it, I'm going to give you one more close-up. Go ahead and take a look at that. Get right up here. And you can see that haystack is in there. And then I'm just going to take it. And I'm going to get it lit right here. With the haystack, as long as we leave it in a well-ventilated area like that and you use a large enough piece, it'll get going really good. So if I didn't say this before, this is an amazing smoke tray. You're gonna find a link to a tips and tricks video for using these kind of uh, pellet trays and tubes. And uh, you'll get kind of an idea of, you know, what they are, you know, how you can use them best. But I'll tell you what, adding this to anything, whether it be a propane grill or a um, charcoal barbecue or any one of your traditional smokers that you've seen me use in the past, I use this with those all the time. Now it's gonna take a little while for this to get going pretty well. So we're just gonna kinda of let it do its thing and ignore it. So I'm gonna take a five minute break for this thing to get going really good. And that'll just be a second for you. It's been just slightly over five minutes and you can see that this big chief front load smoker is just cranking out the smoke. And here, the pellet tray is actually on fire. That is how you know that you're in really good shape when it'll burn through like that. So now I'll blow it out and look at all the smoke that it generates. We know that it's ready to go if we can relight it. And look, just like that, got it relit. I'm gonna throw a few of these pellets back over here. And it's burning again. I'll go ahead and blow it out. And let that go for a second. Now, I'm gonna take this out and show it to you really quick. Look at that. Loads of smoke coming off of that thing. So I'm not gonna have you just hang around and watch me, you know, season a smoke or just burning smoke. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and run this pan through. As soon as this pan stops smoking, I'm gonna to toss this in there and let this sit with the smoker still on until this is completely gone or roughly four or five hours. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll be ready for the next video. So I'll see you on the next video and if you saw anything you like, there are affiliate links below that can help support the channel. So those won't cost you anything extra but I will make a small commission. So again, thanks for watching and have a great day.